Hey guys, it's Apple Mint. Welcome back again to my channel. So for today's video, we're going to be doing some melted crayon art. I've never tried this before, but I'm really excited to. So I'm going to go into some of the supplies that I'm using and we're just going to get right into it. So for the supplies that I'll be using for today's video, I'm starting off with a canvas board. I prefer the flat boards over the thicker stretch canvases for projects like this. So that's what I got there. And then I have a box of Crayola crayons, 48 set. I'm going to try to use as many of these as I can that'll fit the color theme that I'm going for. I also have a bottle of glue that I can use to glue the crayons down onto the canvas. Then I've got a pencil for sketching as well as various paintbrushes in different sizes. And I also have a bottle of masking fluid, which I would like to test out. I'm not sure 100% if it's gonna work. If you guys don't know about masking fluid, it is usually used for watercolors. You put it down on the page to prevent watercolor and paint from going onto that specific area and then you peel it off. So it basically protects a certain area of the page. I'm wondering if this will work to protect areas from melted crayon wax. We'll have to see. And then of course, the hair dryer that I'll be using to melt the crayons. Crayons, crayon. Anyway, my idea for this project is to go with a sunset theme. A lot of people do rainbow melted crayon art. I wanna do something more in the sunset realm because I just like those colors more. Pinks, purples, orange, yellow. Uh, and so we'll go from there. So let's just get right into it. So the first step is blocking in the areas that I want to add a silhouette to. So my plan is to paint everything that I'm sketching out here in black to kind of make it look like a silhouette against the sunset background. That is what I'm planning. I want to do a sunset theme of colors rather than rainbow, which I see a lot of melted crayon art it tends to be rainbow. So I want to go with something a little bit different and do a sunset. And I want to have a girl sitting against a tree and some grass on the bottom. I'm not putting any detail into the drawing itself just because this is gonna be painted over. And also, I'm gonna be using some masking fluid over this area, and because of that, I'm just gonna go crazy with the crayon and hope that I can peel off the masking fluid and the crayon on top of it, but I'm not sure if it's gonna be strong enough. So here's the masking fluid, and I realized that I actually never used masking fluid before. I've had this for a little while, but opening it, the smell like hits you. And I had immediate flashbacks to this pottery class that I took in high school. Anytime we would glaze the pots before they went into the kiln, the glaze had this really distinct smell of like glue and chemicals, <laughs> I don't know. But this smells exactly like that. And so I was having some flashbacks. <laughs> Anyway, I lightly uh, went over the areas that I wanted to protect in case I mess up, you know, I'll just paint over it, I'll figure it out. So in choosing the colors that I want to use for this project, I'm choosing anything blue, purple, pink, red, orange, yellow, anything that can be used for a sunset, and I'm taking as many as I can because I want to make the fade as gradual as possible. So I made the intelligent decision to peel each individual crayon and I immediately regretted it because it took a very long time to peel all of these crayons, let me tell you. And I know that a lot of people who do melted crayon art, a lot of them leave the wrappers on just because it looks cool and the, the crayon will still melt right through it. But I don't know, I thought it would be a good idea to remove it. I thought it would look more natural with the picture, but I, I realized I didn't even need to do this step. So I guess this is optional. This is an optional step here. And it makes a lot of trash as well. And my hands smell like crayon and I have crayons stuck under my nails. So yeah, there's, there are consequences. Anyway, the next step is to glue down each crayon to the canvas board. Yes, by the way, I do say crayon, not crayon. Deal with it. Um, so in gluing each one down, I'm leaving a little space in between each one instead of having them pressed up against each other. I figured A, this would make it so all of my crayons would fit nicely on the left side of the board and I would completely fill the whole thing up rather than if I push them all together, I think I would have needed more crayons and I didn't have that like enough colors. I didn't have anything else to add to this. But also, 
I figured that since I'm gonna be melting these, they might kind of fan out a little bit on the sides. So if I space them out, they're probably gonna melt sideways, not just straight down. And I think this will work out. Anyway, now it is time for the moment of truth. I'm gonna grab my hair dryer and we're just gonna see how this works. I've never done this before, but I am excited to try it. So I'm not gonna destroy your eardrums with the sound of my hair dryer, but this took me about 25 minutes, I would say, which is about what I expected, honestly. At first, getting the crayons to melt felt like it was taking forever, but once I realized, okay, you just have to hold this thing over it for like at least 30 seconds and it's gonna start getting a little drippy, you know, I got the technique down. I will say that I made a few mistakes here. One of my biggest mistakes was, as you can see, I'm moving the hairdryer a little closer to the edges, like the bottoms of each crayon. And in doing that, it's kind of pushing the color all over the place because the air pressure of the hairdryer is just blowing it all over rather than straight down like it does when I hold the hairdryer straight above the whole piece. If I hold it in front of it, it kind of splatters everywhere. And so you'll see the, the yellow area over there is kind of encroached upon by the orange and the red. So my plan for that uh, is to just go back over all of the colors at the end and have them drip straight down to fix that. Another issue that I ran into was, if you can tell where the red is, you'll see a giant clump right in the center. And that happened because I only blow dried it so far down the page and then started getting impatient and moving to the next colors. I should have done what I did with the blue. I realized that it was better with the blue just to blow dry that entire section let it melt all the way down and then move on to something else. So I realized I should have done that with the red. I did end up trying to melt down that clump a little bit, but it didn't go away completely. But hey, I showed a friend and she said it looks like clouds. So I'm gonna say those are like cloud textures, <laughs> cloud textures. And at the very end, I just blue dried straight down and had each color melt just straight down and fix any of the areas that might have been crept upon when I was kind of recklessly blow drying in the beginning. So now it is time to do the painting portion and see if my masking fluid actually peels off. So here's what I got so far in terms of the crayon portion. You can see a lot of it kind of bunched up, but overall I think it looks pretty cool, honestly. It did cover up a lot more of what I thought, but the nice thing is that it just kind of peels right off, so I'm gonna clean some of this up and then we're gonna start painting the black part. So I tried peeling off this masking fluid. Some of it peeled off, but the parts that were underneath the wax were stuck under there, and that's what I figured would happen. I, I mean, I took a chance with this, honestly, and I ended up resorting to just scraping off some of the areas, and then I later realized, you know, I think scraping it off is also kind of silly because I, I don't know. I. I feel like the texture will look cool and so that's why I kept a lot of that texture. I just went over it with the paintbrush because one, from far away you don't really notice that texture, you just see the silhouette, but up close you have the texture of the wax in there and I actually liked that look a little bit more than the areas that didn't have any wax at all. So I did end up regretting picking off and peeling off some of the wax on the page that, or on the canvas that went over the silhouette areas. I, I do regret that, I will say, <laughs> but you know, this this project was for fun. I never did artwork like this before. I usually just draw with markers and paints and things like that, and I've never done <laughs> a melted wax crayon art, so this was really exciting. I'm really happy I tried it out, and I'd be interested to know if you guys ever tried something like this or got creative with anything like this. I'd love to try getting creative with other art supplies on my channel because I do tend to use markers and a lot of the same things a lot. So I'd like to branch out a bit and try some different projects. But anyway, if you like this video, I thank you so much for watching. Please leave your comments in the comment section below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. And as always, I have all of my links in the description box below, including the link to my online shop where you can find all of my enamel pins, my keychains, my prints, everything that I create is there. I've got the link to my Instagram account and I also have the link to my enamel pin club. This month is Froggy Fruit Tart. He is the exclusive pin of the month and you can sign up anytime before the end of February to receive him in March. Anyway, that is my artwork for the video. I'm happy with how it came out. It was a lot of fun to do, even though it was really messy and I had a lot of wax crayons, splatters to clean up after this, but I was happy with how it came out and 
love to try some other different supplies in the future. So until next week, I will see you at Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern time, and I hope you have a beautiful week. Bye-bye.